Hi, besties. Welcome to the podcast where we're all friends because we love all things Bravo, pop culture, and can't stop talking. Having too okay. much fun. <laughs> okay, good, good. Yes. Bravo should be fun. I'm Caitlin Marshall, your host here at Besties by Bravo. Allegations, allegedly allegations. Where we're in a safe space to gossip, share our thoughts, and opinions. That girl's a liar. That girl's a liar. <laughs> About the Bravo celebrities, shows, and celebs we love, hate, and, and that's love to goes, hate. Oh, suddenly now you're so religious. So be cool. Don't be all uncool. He went on a podcast claiming he had a threesome with two women from the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. Immediately, I was like, I wonder if it's Brandy and Carlton. Because sometimes things may get a little, well, ridiculous uh, oh my god i'm sorry there's a spider <laughs> that is coming down I'm, hold on hold on ah! oh my god oh my god Are you, it's like the blair witch project yeah. <laughs> all you can hear in the background yeah. is oh my god has anybody seen my ring oh my god <sighs> I don't want to row in the party or anything. <laughs> my ring. Oh my god. Can you look on the floor for my ring? God, don't you kill me. Don't mess with me because I will come. What? <laughs> oh. Feel free to leave that in for whatever entertainment purposes. I'm so glad you're here to enjoy the fun. So thank you for joining me on Besties by Bravo. Hi, besties. Thank you for joining us today. It's our Thursday Bestie Day with Giorgio Takanakis. Hi, Giorgio. Hi. I can't believe it's Thursday again. I know. It happens a little too fast, in my opinion. Yes. <laughs> That's my opinion. <laughs> well, just like, <laughs> just so y'all know, if you are wanting to get val the Valley recaps, go listen to Giorgio Says Podcast because I am joining him on Wednesdays to do that. And mm. that's where you can get your fill of the Valley, which has been very good. And, yes. you know, speaking of that, let's just start. We have a lot of tea happening today. And I said on Tuesday, I was like, I just know it's been too quiet. It's mm -hmm. been too quiet, Giorgio. <laughs> you know, it's like let's we are those with... Bravo parents that when... You know, the housewives are too quiet. <laughs> it, there's something brewing. Too quiet. Something They're up to something. Mm -hmm. Well, let's just start with the housewives then. Um, Mar Monica Garcia is pregnant with her 29-year-old boyfriend. Yes. And yeah. I believe Zach may have uncovered who the mystery man is at this point. Um, oh, I, I did some research too. His name is Braxton Knight. Okay. And he he's a manager at the Wasatch Adventures, I believe it was, uh, ATV, four-wheeler adventure okay. type of rentals there in Utah. Okay. And Monica met him. Yeah, she met him when she and Heather went and did that whole excursion. That's what it is, Wasatch con uh, Excursions, I believe. Oh, so and she met him while filming she, the show? She did. Okay. They've been together for a year. And when they first met, uh, I'm going to do a TikTok on this just to go into it a little bit deeper and show you all some video, what he looks like, everything like that, because his Instagram is private. You know, I, I looked into it and Monica is following him. So it's very clear. But I, uh, yeah, she was like, I'm putting my number in your phone, <laughs> bitch. And um, <laughs> he was telling her that he, <laughs> he was like courting, quote unquote, courting other women. And he, she was like, oh my God. Like, I'm not in Bridgerton. What do you mean courting? And I guess that's kind of like a Mormon way of saying you're looking into seeing other people. So maybe he's Mormon. Maybe he's not. I don't know. Uh, but yeah, she went on the Nick Vial podcast, Vial Files, and she told him she was seven weeks pregnant at that point, which is very early. But she had only told like her best friend at that point. Hopefully, you know, Braxton as well. But I, when I hear the name Braxton, I'm like, they are absolutely born in the 90s or later. 
I <laughs> it's it's very uh, first listen I congrats to her by the way um I know a lot of people mm. are mm-hmm. you know really love hoping... when my internet is messing with oh. me okay yeah you are frozen first... in a very yep, I'm here okay there you go okay <laughs> wait, wait, I'm sure I was making a very cute face what's alive without some technical difficulties don't even don't even get me started. <laughs> um, yeah, and I think you were saying. You know, congrats to Monica. Obviously, mm-hmm. I just it just seems a little bit like erratic, considering what we know about her. But also, if not Housewives mm-hmm. or Bravo, some other network needs to put this woman on TV. There's so much there to unpack. Agreed. And she's so willing to expose it. Mm -hmm. So Mm -hmm. I just feel like if she's going out here and getting all this press, I hope that someone is talking to her or some production company is working something out because this is a missed opportunity just in reality TV world. I get it didn't work out on Housewives, but come on. At this point, the woman keeps giving. She does. She was made for this, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> or she's making herself. She really was. Those. I'm Yeah, one or the other. Well, okay. So I saw that Lala unfollowed Ariana and Katie <laughs> on Instagram. And then Joe went on Rachel's podcast as in mm. Raquel. Now, mm-hmm. We did get some interesting information. It was a very long-winded, repetitive thing. And y'all know I'll listen to it for you. I will do the Lord's work for you, besties. I will. I'm happy to do it. Uh, Yeah, I did have to listen to it at, you know, at least like 1.25 speed. A little faster. Let's speed it up, you know, type of thing. Yeah. But it's interesting because Joe said that, and we'll get into the episode, but she said that... That night at the singles mixer there at the Mondrian, which I I should remind y'all that the Mondrian is where they all were the night of boys night when Mm. Tom Sandoval and Rachel allegedly hooked up for the first time. But Joe said that she didn't even know at that time that Schwartz made out with someone and that they had had a conversation on the way to the Mondrian that regarding the wristbands, that they were both going to either wear red or yellow because green meant, I'm single, I'm ready to mingle, let's go. Mm-hmm. And yellow was like, it's complicated, but I'm open. And red was, I am not available. And that was the other thing is that the producers ended up months, months, weeks, however long later, telling Joe that... Schwartz made out with someone that night. She didn't even know. And he came home and lied to her about it. So apparently when she was at the reunion, according to her, that uh, she said that Schwartz was basically called out for lying to Joe and everyone else about their relationship. And that basically Katie apologized to her and they all were like, Schwartz, you were lying to all of us. And I find that pretty interesting. You know, remember Joe blocked me on Instagram just because I posted something on TikTok that apparently everyone took as like the worst, most mean girl thing ever because she does strike me as that girl in elementary school who was running around pretending to be a horse and growling at you. It is not far off from how I was. So oh, I'm really like, okay. But she, I I can't see her profile. So uh, she also, it sounds like, is selling Joe My Gosh hats, from what I understand. Hey, take the opportunity. Grab it. Might as well. (laughs) Might as well, man. Uh Uh-huh. Why why miss out on that merch game? (laughs) Am I right? Now, the rest of the podcast was basically her saying that she has moved on or she's trying to move on from Schwartz and she's been quite depressed by 
the whole breakup and that she's really struggling to move on from it. And she still just is like, I'm going to speak very highly of him, yada, yada, yada. I'm still kind of annoyed by how bothered she and apparently Rachel, Raquel, what have you, are by the quote unquote crackhead comment Katie had made, which Katie did not say she does cocaine. She said she gives that energy. And Joe, there are posts that show Joe was joking about that as well. Uh, I just, I'd have to pull them back up, but I have the receipts on that as well. But as someone who has very, been diagnosed by many different professional <laughs> medical professionals with ADHD and someone who, because of that, I am considered neurodivergent. It, I am not personally offended by the statement that someone has crackhead energy that it is an attack on someone with ADHD. Personally, that's not how I feel. And um, that's not me just defending Katie. It's just me saying, do, do I think that was a little far for Katie to go? Sure. But I, I don't, I'm not personally offended by it. And I think it, it's just the one thing that they won't let go of. There are plenty of other things like when she was actually being bullied by Sheena at Hotel Ziggy that night. Oh, yeah, I felt like yeah, that yeah. was... That was a legit bully moment. Mm -hmm. I agree. It it wasn't a clear like, cut. I don't leave care. her alone. Just, if she like, wants to wear a hat, let her wear a goddamn hat. Or just don't talk. Yeah, don't talk to her. Mm -hmm. You're not. Mm -mm. You don't have to engage with her. She's not a cast member. No. I. I yeah. Agreed. Uh, also, I saw that Ariana has now done a partnership with DSW. And she continues carrying on winning. And I think, at least I hope, a lot of people after this week's episode are seeing that, yeah, she was still freaking going through it when they were filming. Again, people, three months after the reunion, they had those cameras up for them. That's, whew. Mm-mm-mm. -mm. Uh, aside Very from interesting, um, the, I'll, I'll put his. Hmm. Sorry, go ahead. Yes. Oh, no. No, I was <laughs> what? Just, Very interesting. I, what? I think we're getting a delayed. Re <laughs> yeah, probably. Probably. It's my internet's not being kind to me on this Thursday. So sorry about that. Uh, so the only other thing that happened came out today was the man who murdered Nicole Brown Simpson and her friend Ron passed from cancer. His name is OJ Simpson. You maybe have heard of him. <laughs> I'm not laughing at it. Wild. I'm just wild is right. That is correct. Interesting, too, because uh, one more thing before we hop into Vanderpump Rules, Brittany Cartwright did an interview with Us Weekly, and man, it was pretty scathing against Jax, and all I'm going to say is I heard he's ha been having problems on his end in bedroom areas because of certain things that he partakes in, and it causes Ooh. issues in the bedroom, so... From what I uh -huh, from what I understand, that's part of the issue as well for Jax and Brittany. Oh my. Well, I know, I know it's a lot. It's a lot today, my friends. Should we jump into Vanderpump Rules? It wasn't an insane episode, but I we did get some insight. We did. Oh, well, I did. I mean, I think a lot of people will <clears throat> disagree with my view on it, but I saw two. I saw two things happening with two different people at the same time. And so, although I understand mm -hmm. we're just referring to this episode, I'm going to, I just want to preface, I'm sticking to this episode. I understand that things have been said since after all of that more recently, but I'm more referring to the episode and the situation. Cause I did see that there was, it, we'll get into it. Mm. I'm interested to hear what you have to say, my friend. Well, we did pick up, pick back up 
at the beach where Brock thinks it's a fantastic idea to continue telling Ariana, oh, Sandoval's castrated. He's he's talk, he's got his tail tucked between his legs. I mean, I don't know. That was a bit of British New Zealand, and he is New Zealand, but um, we're close. We're close. Close enough. And I'm sorry. Yeah, close enough, you know. You know, the thing is, I don't find Sandoval to be castrated in a corner during this. And I do feel yeah. that Ariana is correct. She did not do anything for him to do that, to be talking to her this way. He just can't take the consequences of his own actions, in my opinion. He doesn't like the uh, pushback yeah. that he's getting. And she's right. He has no leg to stand on. He, even if he felt that way, he, he shouldn't be saying it because his wrong was way bigger than anything that he can point out about her. Exactly. You know, and that's, I really want to question is if Ariana did not get all of these opportunities stemming from Scandal, would everyone still be like, well, she needs to get over it. If she gained nothing and only lost this home that she felt was her dream home. And that was it. Would everyone still be giving her shit for having this much of an emotional response? I don't think they, I, I don't think it would be the same. I think everyone's just pissed personally that she's getting all these opportunities. So that I think the, the opportunity should have her where she's over. It. Yes, I think it would be different, but I also think it would be different with certain people. It would be different with like Sheena. Um, because and Lala, I think. Well, I think mm, I don't know because I think Lala would still kind of be like, "All right, girl, you gotta, you you gotta get something." Her messaging, although people do not like it, we need someone like Lala. Let's be honest; we cannot just have this whole season be everyone just going along with whatever the wind's blowing towards Ariana. I understand mm -hmm. that she is in an immense amount of pain, but the reality is this is still a TV show. And so someone's got to challenge certain things. And yeah. I think the things that Lala has been challenging have been anything that I think anybody who's trying to be very logical about the situation and also understanding that this is not healthy for this person to continue to be in this, like, situation although it is like her dream home i think lala's kind of stayed true to just being like yeah but also understanding that because she's seen that ariana has all these opportunities i think that's more of a reason why lala's maybe being a little tougher about it because in her mind she's like all right yeah but you do have enough cash that you could get a small something just to get some peace of mind mm -hmm. so that you can figure out how to process this Whereas Sheena is more coming at it like every time Ariana has an issue with something, it's almost like a dig at her. She's taking it like she takes it personal mm -hmm. when there's a situation that Ariana gets, like an opportunity, which is why this is being joked about so much recently. Because I also saw that, I don't know if it came out today, but, you know, Ariana did a big sponsorship. Um, that also came out. So it's like all these things are oh, flourishing yeah. for her. And at this point in the show, yes, it's still fresh. And, you know, but I do think that from Sheena's perspective, if Ariana wasn't getting any opportunities and she was like still that girl that was $2,000 away from being broke, Sheena would be the bestest friend to her and we would see her in a completely different light. Thank you. That's what it is. That's what it is because how at the end of the day, it's like, oh, how dare she turn uh, lemons into lemonade? My God. I'm being facetious, obviously. Oh my God. And Sandoval in confessional. Jeez Louise with the batteries and the toilet paper again. I can't. <laughs> Who cares? Why Anything is that? I don't understand why people need to pick on these bags, things. Pens. Everyone has a role. Everyone's doing something that the other one's well, not doing. Exactly. And if you're not, then that should have been a conversation. Why yes. are you waiting until now to bring it up? 
because he has nothing else he can use as ammo against her. It's pens, batteries, and toilet paper. And even the producer's like, you just got destroyed on the internet for saying that. Why would you bring that up again? Uh, I think Ariana's going to be in for it when she gets her own place. She's going to be in that, for a very rude awakening. Oh. That part, I was like, okay, you're not her Jeez. dad. She's clearly purchased a home before. She knows what it takes. Like, you're talking like she's never been on her own in her life. Like, she doesn't know how it is out there in the real world. Exactly. Exactly. Like, she has lived by herself before, I'm sure, or had roommates. She yeah. hasn't been living with her parents her whole life for crying out loud. You surely did not birth her, Sandoval. At the beach day. No. No, you did not raise this woman. Absolutely not. And friends, I apologize for whatever delay is happening. I am looking at my Wi-Fi and it's like, hey, Caitlin, fuck you. You want to do something today? <laughs> you thought. Um, <laughs> story of my life, I swear to God. <laughs> um, <laughs> so Tori's brought up and we see at Hotel Ziggy when Tori went up to Schwartz and she was like, just so you know, I think you're hot. But Katie allegedly, supposedly, was into Tori enough that she thinks she should date her instead. And I do have to say about the after show, Ariana did vouch for Katie, saying, no, Katie was saying she was into Tori before she even had any idea that Tori had anything going on with Schwartzy, all of that. And the look Ariana gave them in the flashback whenever Katie and Tori hugged at Hotel Ziggy, listen... You know what look I'm talking about. Ariana looked over like, oh, you could see it on her face. So do I think that this whole thing with Tori is factual and organic and real? Absolutely not. It's a totally made up relationship love triangle for reality TV. But we're, we'll, we'll go ahead and play along for a second. <laughs> oh, man. And sure. uh, Sandoval and Schwartz. Yeah, uh-huh. Sandoval and Schwartz just kind of like fucked off to the bar. And did you notice how excited Schwartz got when Katie was calling him to tell him he left his stuff at the beach? I just, I have to point this out. I do. Listen, if Katie called him right now and was like, we're getting back together, he would be like mm -hmm. thrilled and be up so and down. running. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So down. Then Sandoval starts hitting on some random chicks at the bar. And something about the way he said, oh, Madison, because one of their names was Madison. I was like, something about the way you say it sounds so similar to the way Austin Kroll says it. And it was just kind of like, Madison. I don't know. My brain switched over. And I was like, oh, great. Now we have I'm, Sandoval saying that name. I'm getting really exhausted by these produced group of ladies that we keep throwing into these situations like we're supposed to care like oh you. these young girls with these 40 year old men like who think they're still in their 20s that are like it's it's just so weird it happened at sandoval's pool party too it's just those random girls that mm -hmm. you could just tell were like picked from <laughs> the grove and they're like hey do you guys want to be on a tv show <laughs> Have you ever heard of Tom Sandoval? And then they're supposed to pretend they don't have any idea who he is. Like, give me a break. He was on. They <laughs> talked about him at the White House on SNL. They've talked about it everywhere. Give me a break. Everyone knows. They even talked about it on like Joe Rogan's podcast at this point. It has been everywhere. Okay. <laughs> You'd have to be actively avoiding things to not know. Truly. Uh, yes. So Sandoval cheers as these girls after buying a round of shots. And he says, to Venice, sun and laughter and a continued happily ever after. It's, it's just embarrassing. And Schwartz even seems embarrassed by it. Well, Tori comes over and Schwartz pretends that she's his girlfriend. <laughs> and she's game to play acting mad and, you know, being like, oh, my God, are you going to include me in your conversation? So I feel like Tori's way of flirting is negging, you know, like just negative, like I'm going to be shitty to you and that's me flirting. 
thing. I am like back in the in my heyday. I like I giggled so much with Tori when she started doing all that because that is exactly how I would be after I had a few drinks. I would I would never be nice. It would always be like a nag or I would go and do what she did and like they'd be talking to someone and I would be like, what's going on here? Wow. Like, and then, you know, <laughs> that was my that. way of like, so it was funny, but she's also 24. So like, I don't really expect her not to be fun and playful. She's 24. Of course she should be. She's a baby. Yeah. 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 I mean, it was cracking me up, you know, she, because also she basically makes Schwartz ask her out on a date. And then Katie comes over and Katie was wasty facey. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Tequila Katie was right where she mm, needed she to was, be. She... Ooh. Ooh. Uh, Ariana, Sheena, and Lala have a little heart to heart. And they're asking Ariana if she feels like she has unresolved feelings. And she says she does. But it's also brought up that uh, Sandoval has never even said he screwed up in the big thing, you know, the affair. And that's why she can't have a calm conversation with him. And so then Ariana, or I'm sorry, then Lala asks Ariana as though Lala's doing some sort of an interview on her own podcast or like she's Oprah or Barbara okay. Walters or something. Do you ever look at him and think like, you just threw me away like I was nothing? Yeah, Lala, babe, she probably, that's how she feels. It Lala was like producing her fully in that moment, <laughs> like fully well, producing her. I think that was for a reason. I think what people don't realize is Lala is yeah. the producer on the cast. And she has had this issue with Ariana in the past. She tries to get to know what's going on. She asked the questions and Ariana in the past was like no go because she didn't want her relationship to be exposed in any negative way. Now it's like... Right. Well, someone's got to pull some emotion that's not anger out of Ariana. So how can we frame this up? It's not going to be mm -hmm. Sheena by all means. Like, yeah. give me a break. Because if it's not about Sheena, she's not going to do it. <laughs> if she's we not. did that and left it to she's Sheena, Sheena would have been person. talking about her own traumas by the end of it. We would have gotten nothing out of Ariana. Exactly. Yeah. It's the Sheena show. She's not the type of person to do it for the greater good of the uh, of the work of the show. She's not going to do that. Lala will, but not Sheena. Mm -hmm. Nope, she she ain't doing that. <laughs> but Ariana really broke down, saying how she was really just struggling with it, and how she realizes this isn't healthy, and that Sandoval knew all the deepest, darkest parts of her, and even Lala's tearing up. And mm -hmm. you know, it what. I feel like people should have really gotten something out of this to see Ariana, even though she has technically moved on at this point, it's still not just about the house. It's like the last thing she has to hold over him. And I'm sorry. I am. Uh, I, I know I seem like I go back and forth and seem also like I must be a petty person, but at the end of the day, no dude, you can't even act contrite around me you have to yell back at me constantly that's what he does ariana every damn time he's throwing digs at her and that's what she's saying is like she she literally did isn't the one who did anything and he's the one sitting there getting away with throwing digs at her over shit like bills in a litter box and batteries <laughs> like, give me a fucking break dude but can we mm -hmm. point, can we just, can we notice who was not crying out of those three people the entire time? Sheena. Hmm. Okay. Sheena. Mm hmm. I, I am, oh. you know, Sheena has complained on the after show about how she's never had a good season. And whose <laughs> fault is that at this point? <laughs> Well, to because be fair the producer to her, there was, who loved a, to give there was the Sheena edit is There gone. were some seasons where they were they were purposefully editing her in a and I think the one producer right. even said it on a podcast and got fired. But since then, I feel like she's gotten a more mm -hmm. fair she's gone. edit. It's not as bad. I 
Mm, she's no, bad. I think that but it's just edits. Sheena at the end of the day. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I can't blame it on that. Uh, you know, someone had said in the comments of our last video that, for example, knowing now after Ariana says in confessional that she's had her armor up because he's going around talking shit about her. And she's, again, not the one who did something. And he acts like he did nothing wrong and has no remorse. And, mm -hmm. you know, someone had mentioned in the comments of our last video that Ariana's room being messy could also be a testament to the state of her mental health at that moment and how she was actually feeling. And so, you know what I, and I just wanted to bring that up because I thought that was a good point. And, you know, I know when I'm mentally not in a good state, I cannot physically get, I, I'm not going to color coordinate my closet. Like I normally do. I'm not going to be like, I, I just, and throwing things to get out of the way. I'm putting them away, shoving them in places. So I do understand that that's something like you can always tell the state of my life by either my room or my car. And if it's a disaster, it's because I am a tornado going through everywhere. So I do understand that. And I, I just wanted to bring that up real quick, but Tori and Katie are talking and Katie after being asked by Tori says she's never dated a girl, but Katie has slept with a girl and Katie just says she's attracted to people. And here's what I find very interesting. I, I just want to note that there is, this is a fantastic example of how you can go and give an answer that isn't labeling yourself. Mm -hmm. Kyle Richards that you, say something without saying everything. If you're worried about being put in a box, I totally get that. But I, I felt like it was a very simple explanation. And I don't think it had anyone going, ooh, ah, uh, ooh, yeah. It was simple. And it, and that's, you know, do are we owed explanations? Are we, you know, entitled to them? No, but I just kind of wish someone like Kyle could take note if that's where she's at. There, you don't have to put a label on yourself if you're not ready to. It it, it can be a very simple thing. Uh, <clears throat> I think the difference with Kyle, though, just to be fair to Kyle, is the image Kyle mm -hmm. portrayed for so long was not what we saw over the last year. With Katie, I wouldn't... Like, yes, she was obviously married to, to Schwartz for a long... She's with, she was with him for a long time. But mm -hmm. I wouldn't... I wasn't like, oh, Katie. No. Like, I was like, oh, yeah, Katie. Oh, I could see I could see Katie. I could yeah. See Katie. No yeah. big. Totally. It was very... Something about them kissing was sort of awkward. It was sort of cute at first, and then it just kind of got awkward. And I also because I felt like Katie was so not sober that it was just something about it <laughs> wasn't quite. <laughs> it, it needed to be a different setting. <laughs> I think that, you know, I was weirded out not so much by the kiss, but the excitement from this younger person to an older person. It was weird. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, had this yeah. person been the same age as Tori, and she was, I just really want to kiss you. I'm so excited. You're so pretty, and like, yeah, all that. That's great. But then you have someone who's clearly older, who's not interested in anything more than just having fun with this person mm -hmm. on both sides, mm -hmm. Schwartz and Maloney. And it was just, yeah, it went on too long. It could have just been one fun. The kiss. energy was off. Yeah. And yeah. Exactly. And it almost felt like the energy Katie, would just wasn't matched. Maybe perhaps Katie was not faking it, but putting on a little bit for the show, for the storyline, because I yeah. feel like maybe she got a little too tipsy mm -hmm. trying to get herself to be, you know, because yeah. that's got to be nerve wracking when you're pressured to kind of like something's got to yeah. happen here with this situation. But, um, right. Yeah. I don't know. It wasn't my vibe. No, like I said, that energy just didn't match. And it's no. not even about Katie's age specifically and Tori's specific age. It's just that their energies 
are very much like Tori is very, has that very youthful energy. She's adorable. She's got, you know, she, she's uh what's the word I'm looking for? She's perky and all of that. And Katie's very chill. She's always, even when she's mad, she's not like a screaming banshee. She's just got a different vibe. So it, I think I was just thrown off by that. If, if it were someone closer to Katie's vibe and not just her age, but her vibe, I think it would have had a totally different feeling for us. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Well, that happened and everyone was like, oh, oh my gosh, they're kissing. Blah, 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 blah. So Lala, I can't even believe the sentence is coming out of my mouth. Mm -hmm. Lala and Joe go to a hot dog stand. <laughs> Where Joe so says they random. look like a lesbian couple. Yeah, it was. It was. I mean, did it look delicious? Sure. But oh I yeah. And Lala's like, um, would that make me a lipstick lesbian? Pretty sure it'd make you a femme. You're a lot more than a lips, just you know, you do more than uh, lipstick. Lala so anyway. can be a little uh, Lala I, can be a little mask. When she throws those trucker mm, hats on and know. she she's she's going bare and she's cussing you out like like I could just see her being like <laughs> bitch get in the car when the eyebrows like, are okay. up <laughs> bitch get in the car okay you don't have to yell at me I was going to <laughs> <laughs> is that how Jeff tells you to get in the car. <laughs> Yeah, no. Or is that how you tell Jeff to get there? Well, no, I mean, probably. <laughs> I, I mean, in the beginning, I used to take so long to get ready. So long. And he'd be waiting and waiting, and it would just get disastrous. But I've been more efficient I... with my time. Well, um, maybe you could teach me a few things about that. Because <laughs> I need it. Uh... <laughs> Please, Lord, <laughs> because clearly we're not going to have any days or I'm sorry, any hours added to the day and I need it. Uh, you know, I do find it very interesting and telling that in confessional, Joe says that she knows Tom's friends are very important as in Schwartz's friends are very important to him. And she wants to be a welcome part of the group. And if I want to be in Schwartz's life forever, Lala is potentially the ticket to that. The way it's, I think it's a combo of how much she does want to be on the show, but also very much want to be with Schwartz. And mm, I'm just, the way, y'all know how I feel about Schwartz. I think he is, and he has a charming facade. He's a handsome man, but deep down, he ain't a nice person. Okay? No. He feels guilt, I think, after he does shitty things. And that's what makes it seem like he's a nice person and he knows how to play puppy dog. And it pisses me off. He gets away with so much shit. And even Sandoval, you can tell at one point, the way he talks about him. And then Joe says this to Lala. That she, or was it to Lala? Or no, it was in confessional. It was a little mix of both. That she didn't know that Raquel and Rachel were a thing because she was too busy watching Schwartz. Too busy watching Tom Schwartz. Schwartz, what were you watching him do? What's going on? Well, I think she was. Huh? I think what she. I think what she was trying to say was, at that moment when they were all hanging out, she only was paying attention to what Schwartz was doing and saying because she was trying to make the point that she only has interest in Schwartz. However, she was also under the impression, I and this is not the first time that we heard this, where she was under the assumption that they were already split by that point. Like they had already right. been split. So she didn't think to have to ask what's going on here. And to be fair to her, and I get that some of the stuff she's done online is icky and some of her motives may be sideways and maybe I'm just paying too much attention to that wackadoodle side that I'm just looking at like, okay, she's just all over the place. Not like someone that I would be like, watch out for her. You know what I mean? But maybe, I don't know. It's just, some of it I think is just misconstrued the way that she speaks about it because I feel like she really, 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 really liked Schwartz and 
has liked him from yeah. the get go. And I think she's been trying her hardest to be like cool, bro. But unfortunately, mm-hmm. her feelings got the best of her. So, no, I don't necessarily think it's, it's I know it's easy to want to think that, but I don't think she knew all the details like that. I really don't. I think she absolutely knew that Rachel and Sandoval were banging. You, they were taking no, trips I, I think together. That she, she does, but I think yeah. her point was she already already thought that they had her, Ariana and Sandoval were broken up. So she's probably just like, I don't, I don't know, like, I don't know. How close was I Joe just, to the situation, though? In in all fairness, like, yes, she was around, but like, was Ariana and Joe really good? Like, were they besties? Did I miss something? Because no, I don't feel but, like. I, okay, but like. You don't Ariana have, doesn't have to you like don't have Joe. To be besties with someone. You don't have to no. like her. And Katie doesn't either. Means. Katie doesn't either. Yeah. And Katie doesn't either. But honestly, like that shouldn't impact. If Schwartz liked Joe, he could just be with Joe, and it wouldn't matter what Ariana and Katie right. had to say about it because they're not a factor, and they don't really care about him that much either. To be fair, so like, what right. would it matter? Well, you know, I just, she and Rachel are very close to the point where Joe said she's been asked to do so many podcasts and she said, I will never do any except for yours, Rachel, or she calls her Raquel still, which she clears up that it doesn't offend her if someone calls her Raquel, whatever. But I, she said, I would only ever do yours or Billy Lee's and all this stuff that really, really putting it down that they are very, very close and I'm sorry, I don't know about you, but you're taking some road trips with someone all the way out to Big Bear from the free, from freaking Valley Village. What are you going to talk about? The only thing you two had in common at that point were the two Toms. So what else could you talk about on the way? And that's why it's kind of like, it's also shitty because both of these Toms had their secret little girlfriends and they're both assholes for it. They both had these women feeling special about themselves, thinking that they were someone to them more than what they clearly were, and at least regarding Schwartz. And they were trying to have this whole secretive little family affair there. And it was just kind of like, I I do feel bad for Joe to a certain extent, but also she's got to take some accountability for some of what she participated in. Do I find her the most at fault? No, but you were, you cannot convince me in any world that she didn't have at least one or two questions in her mind regarding Ariana and Sandoval. Like, well, why are they still living together if they broke up? Why? Like, as in maybe just asking Schwartz in private, you know what I'm saying? It's I think she why are she they still hanging have. out so much? She may have, but I still don't know if that makes her part of the scandal as much as they're making it out to be on the show, at least. Because yeah, sure, yeah. there was a lot of people that probably knew on Tom's side. So yeah, I think she like she was yeah, she's I, playing I, still think I think she, she's playing she selfishly. She's playing selfishly because A, she obviously wants to be with Schwartz. So she doesn't, she doesn't want to mess around with anything that would cause there any issue there. But ultimately she's guilty by association, unfortunately, because of who she's associating with and continues to associate with. So it's, even if Schwartz wanted to date her, she would be making her own life very difficult if she were to be on the show Mm -hmm. because they would not welcome her very easily. Yeah. I don't know. I just, I get a sense that it's convenient to say, well, I wasn't paying attention to that. And I find that type of stuff bullshit. Cause I'll tell you what, if it were, were like, I don't know. I, I, I can't even, I'm so tired of like putting scenarios into my real life of like how I, I, I would pick up on it at some point, and I am ADHD as hell if we're going to blame it on that. I I mean, you can be as kooky and goofy as you want, but you you are not that unobservant. You couldn't have lived and survived in Los Angeles without being hit by something. <laughs> if you're that off in la-la land and not observant in any way. So uh, 
this is the point, the part where I don't have a lot of sympathy for Joe, but there is a lot coming from me for her later on. So don't worry. I'm getting to it, friends. Joe, you know, um, I'm skipping over the a sperm bank thing. That's just, I'm, I'm good. Uh, Schwartz goes to get his hair dyed by Joe. It's funny because before James brought up how, oh yeah, Schwartz definitely dyes his hair. As soon as I saw that bleach on Schwartz's head, I was like, oh my God, he's been dyeing his hair for years because his roots, the virgin hair, I used to be a hairstylist and I was a colorist. They were turning white as hair that has not been touched by dye. The rest of it was orange. And I, for the life of me, they must have done at least a triple process on him after she toned him. And I, I don't know, man, I almost feel like she accidentally put in some, maybe a level seven, like a, depending on what brand you're using, like a seven B or a seven yeah. one. Cause it was brown. She, she <laughs> messed that. that job up from the minute she started applying the bleach to his roots first, because anybody, and I have the pictures to prove it, my friends, I used to bleach my hair for like seven years, platinum blonde. Mm -hmm. And I know with my dark ass hair, when it was already colored, that I needed to work from that part first and bleach all that color or get color removal and do the color remover first and then do the ends with the bleach, get it up a little See? bit and then do the, the roots and then do the scalp bleach shampoo that she did do i saw her do it but then the well, toner I done that first sure but if she was going to approach it the it's quickest so way happened. removing <laughs> color from the hair first would have instantly made her job so much easier yeah i i have a feeling he didn't totally tell her how and you know he was using like just for men yeah. from walgreens he was using and that box color stuff from like box Dwayne color. Reed. Yeah. And she, though, but hairstylists can tell. Y'all don't use box color. It doesn't leave. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I could tell immediately. And you can tell by the different tones in his hair. No one's hair is naturally, like, toned in that way, where it's that multicolored. But, you know, personally, now this is turning into something different. But I would have been, you have to apply to the roots first. I would have gone with only, like, a 20 volume. And then I would have mixed some Olaplex in with a 30 volume taking it toward those ends. But I first, before doing any of that, you have to do a test strand because especially if you aren't sure if he's been dyeing his hair and I don't think he told her the truth. The reason box dye is typically not good for your hair and why your hairstylists tell you no, no, no is because it is permanent hair color. Permanent hair color, you have to use certain, I always use my hands to do a demonstration here. This is more than y'all wanted to know, but uh, here you go for some hair education. Whenever there is a volume of developer that is over 10. So there's usually like some of them make like a seven or a nine depends on the brand, but 10 past 10, it is going to lift the cuticle in your hair. And when you lift the cuticle, that's what ble for bleaching, for inserting color, lifting the cuticle means that you will be able to lift the hair color to a lighter color. There are certain levels from level one being black, 10 being platinum, icy blonde. And at, when you go in, you can do different developers. Like that's why if you have fragile hair and you're dyeing your hair blonde, if someone's putting a 30 volume with bleach on you, you, you better find a new stylist or ask that they only use 20 volume because you shouldn't really be using more than 20 volume on anyone. But the permanent color that's usually a 20 volume developer that's mixed in into that box. So then if you're not properly only applying to your roots and you bring some color over on top of your regrowth, you will not only have a ring, but a lot of people will bring the color down. You can do that by getting your hair wet first and it's called emulsifying. That is when the color has gone past the point of lifting and developing and it turns itself into a toner. But most people who are box dyeing in their hair at home, don't do that. So what happens? You get permanent color, darker and darker and darker all the way to your roots. And let me tell you what it's like to try and turn someone with box color hair blonde. It doesn't happen. It breaks off. It's orange and then it goes away. <laughs> so there you go. No amount of toner will do it. I, I am telling you, she had to have bleached 
done the toner and then she absolutely bleached again. And I pray to God for his hair that she put some Olaplex or K18 on it. <laughs> Please God, because otherwise he has nothing left. Um, so yes, now he's, that was such a long tangent. I'm sorry. <laughs> it was important. It was, it was, it was important. It was a, it was a PSA on just don't, don't use box dye. I'd rather see y'all go to Sally's and get some help with actually mixing the color. Do your research. It's smarter to do. I promise. And it's less work going back to the salon. I can sure assure you of that because ooh, that gets expensive. Color corrections are miserable. So uh, the shot of these girls walking into the dive bar. Oh, why are we doing that? I know you said it was reminiscent of the hills. But it felt like a 90s high school girls movie. Yeah, like a, we yeah, it felt it very like early 2000s teen bot movie. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, they talk about Katie's date with Tori, which that date painting in Katie's apartment. I, I, this is when I'm like, no, Katie was just drunk. She is not interested in Tori. That doesn't mean she may not be interested in another woman, but I, I mean, the way she was looking at her when she was saying like she thought Bob Ross was still alive. How, how do these older men date these very, very young women? How? Someone tell me. I, I, what are you talking about? You know? Um, yeah, possibly. But I also think that Katie wasn't really going to take this girl out to like an establishment. It felt like, like, felt like any older guy that was yeah. asking you out, but then you somehow ended up at his house and you guys never went out. I have no idea what that's like. Mm. <laughs> Just kidding. Hmm. Um, okay. Meanwhile, over at the Mondrian, remember that's where guys night happened. The infamous guys night. These freaking dorks walk in and we get to see Sandoval's new assistant, Craig, who is like a mini Sandoval. Uh, tell me he's not. I mean, he's just like. Mm -hmm. Joe will not stop touching Schwartz's hair. Now, let me also, I will defend her on this. When you are a, hairstylist, a hairstylist and you have had your hands yes. in his hair all day. You can't stop. It makes you nuts, especially someone like Schwartz who won't get his hands out of his hair. And you're like, I just. And he was wearing stop. a hat. He was wearing a hat and he kept taking it off and she was trying to fix it because she had just done it. So I, I, I didn't find that to be abnormal. No, it was Sandoval who was so pissy about it. And Kyle Chan were a little what have you. But I... <sighs> Short says he went out on a date with Tori the night before, and Joe then had the gall to say, oh, she's weird. <laughs> and this is where I get confused by Joe, especially on the podcast she did with Rachel. She kept saying it was so very clear that they were dating, and yet he tells you on camera he went out on a date with someone else. I hate men. <laughs> Present like, company excluded, so but... Here's the problem, though, with this is this is where Joe gets herself in a heap of mess because she's not being clear. He probably told Joe for the show, I have to date and do these things. Mm -hmm. I think behind closed doors, I believe Joe. I think they were dating. I think they were I more too. than just a random fling of friends that just hooked up at times. I think they really were dating. I think when the show started filming again, Tom probably explained here and there, and she went along with it a little bit. But when they got to that point in the night, when he was doing all that, I think that's when she was like, okay, this isn't just the show anymore. You're, you're doing the most. You're doing this. But she says she didn't even see him make out with this girl that she had to find out later. Um, so let me see real quick. Krista had a question here. Um, she wanted to know why Joe was living with Tom. And she did go into that in the, uh, podcast with Rachel. 
And she said that she had been living in her own home. This was months after he and Katie separated and all of that. And that he had an extra room. And that's why she went in there because she needed a place to live. And she was literally just wanting to save money. And they hadn't hooked up at all when she was living there. She said she was there for six days. But then when they started dating, she would go stay in this room quite often. And I am assuming the place she ended up being in was farther away from Burbank and if you know, you know, living in LA, she said she worked in Burbank and I actually had almost moved into, into the exact same building that Schwartz is currently living in at one point. And it's way out, it's past North Hollywood. It is a decent, decently close area to Burbank is all I will say. So that's from what I understand. And then they started dating after she had moved out. So it was like a, short stay from what I understand. And I guess the producers caught on to her being there whenever mm. he like caught a pizza on fire in the oven. And so, um, she came out and that's when they were like, uh, we're going to need to get a shot of you like leaving or something. And that was all that happened that last season. Um, so yeah, that, that's where that was. Uh, then back over though, Oh Lordy. Uh, well, let me also say how uh, Sandoval, he says in confessional again, this is me reminding y'all that he clearly is so jealous of Schwartz in this sense that he says that Joe is looking at her situationship with Schwartz as glass half full and that because Schwartz is so charming, he gives mixed signals. And the But the way Sandoval said that, I was like, he is so pissed because he know he and I don't disagree that Schwartz probably could have gotten away if if it were Scandival and it were Schwartz would mm -hmm. have been nothing in comparison yes nothing 1000 mm percent -hmm. and I do agree with that that's how it would go but back over with the girls Lala tells them she had hot dogs with Joe and Katie makes it very quick that she is pissed. Now, some of y'all aren't going to like this. And I know I sound like I defend Katie a lot, but I think it's because I am so hung up on the fact that she is so misunderstood and there are so many things that I know I would be upset about that she gets upset about and everyone gives her shit about. And it makes me insane. Because I'm going to tell you what. When Katie says to Lala that Joe is nothing to her, but that Katie is something to her. I'm sorry, Giorgio. If my ex, I don't care started dating someone and you go hang out with their new person. I'm going to be like, listen here, motherfucker. <laughs> I, I wouldn't like it. I wouldn't like it either. I'm sorry. I know it may be childish. It may be immature. It may be petty, but no, no, don't do that. Why are you hanging out with her? And I understand at the same time where it's like, okay, was it difficult maybe for Lala to be like, no, I'm not going to come meet up with you because I know I tend to be a people pleaser. I know it might be surprising, but that would be very difficult for me to say no, but I don't find Lala to be a people pleaser. And she's saying, you know, the reason she went to hang out with her or, or have this hot dog. <laughs> I don't even know what I'll say. It's a hot dog with Joe is because she's soft right now. And I understand Lala felt like she'd been just, I don't, I don't know why I'm only thinking of a hedgehog and not a porcupine, <laughs> but like quills up toward everyone. Yes, that is a fact. And she, I understand she's trying to do better, be better, be kinder, more empathetic. I, I don't know that telling Katie ahead of time would have made it any better. I'm not saying that, but just as Lala has every right to say, I'm going to go do whatever I want to do. And that Lala has the right to say, I'm sorry, you're upset, but it doesn't, it's not going to bother me. Katie also has a right to be upset. My opinion. She mm -hmm. does. I mean, listen, <clears throat> I'm not surprised that Katie's upset about it, but also if we're looking at this in the context of, again, we are filming a show in real life, Lala would be nowhere near Joe at a hot dog stand. Let's just be 1,000% crystal clear, okay? <laughs> Number two, right. she, 
she did not go hang out with Joe and Kiki and have the best time ever. She literally did what production asked. Can you go ask Joe, because you're the most neutral and logical, and you're mm-hmm. asking all the questions. Yeah. Can you go get some type of confirmation to get her side of the story on this? Because we're not going to be able to get Katie to get it from her. We're not going to be able to, you know, so listen, Lala's got a job and she's doing it. And she also knows how this game works. And Katie, yes, you can be upset in the moment, but you also have to understand that like you kind of sit pretty right now. You're sitting next to the person who went through scandal ball and you're back. Well, she is because she's, she's kind of safe storyline wise. She doesn't have to really do too much except show up angry and be upset about something. And I like Katie and I understand why she's mad about a lot, but I think it's also unfair that now she gets to bogart every person that she feels is, is nothing to her. And while we're filming the show now, you now Lala has to put her job in jeopardy because she's going to start telling the producer. No. Are you going to pick up her? Yeah. She has a, she has mortgages now. So. Multiple. Just saying. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But you know what? You know, it, she's also a mom of two almost. So listen, she's mm-hmm. worried about her bag and I get it. These people are not, they wouldn't be that they weren't to be fair. They weren't as concerned when, you know, Schwartz was hanging out with Randall. They weren't giving Schwartz crap on Lala's behalf. No one was coming and, and right. standing no, up I in, agree. That, in that little short time so katie i'm sorry but like let's take it down a notch you can say i didn't like i don't like the idea of you doing that with her but i get why you did it yeah well the thing though and you know i love lala too i just for me to be true you know to my own thoughts here when lala calls out about Katie calling Joe a crackhead, but doesn't mention how Sheena was outright bullying Joe at Hotel Ziggy. What? It's like these two teamed up and said, okay, well, we're going to have each other's backs. And it's like, you know, (laughs) I thought Sheena was way worse than, and and maybe, you know, that's comparing apples and oranges. Bear that in mind. But I mean, to be in her face, like yelling at her about her stupid hat, like, you know, and we've gone over that ad nauseum, but I just kind of was annoyed that why are you bringing up the crack crackhead energy comment that Joe even made a joke about on like Instagram? I'll have to pull up the receipts somewhere. I, I don't want to be sitting here going through my phone at the moment, but I mean, it's, it's just kind of like, okay, call everyone out though. Don't just call one person. And that's, that's where I get annoyed with some of that. You know, I it's in Lala's just been a little bit flip flopping, and I get that she's making the show work. But in the world of the show, it's hard to just sit there and go, okay, well, yeah, that because then we go into scripted land, and that's where it can get a little tough to take it seriously anymore. But I, I understand that she's, you know. But something I do wish is Ariana could have stood up for Katie in that moment because Katie's been very ride or die for her. And you know I love Ariana too. But, you know, if it were you and I sitting next to each other and let's say you were in Katie's position, I would have been like, okay, because Sheena stepped in for Lala. So I really do wish Ariana had stepped in for her. That's She didn't have to say a lot. She just could have said, well, can you see her point of view even? Like that's all that – just show a little support for a second. Because you could tell Ariana was battling that, the look on her face, at least. Yeah, I know. I mean, listen, um, I... So back at the... I just feel like Ariana not saying anything says a lot. Yeah. I do agree. And I love her. It just was kind of like, girl, Katie has fully had your back. <laughs> um, At the Mondrian, I can't even talk about Sandoval flirting with people. It's just like... So I uh, I guess whenever Schwartz was flirting with this chick, she took his hat. And Joe's side of the story was that hat was supposed to supposedly like very sentimental from his father. And that's why she jumped in saying, oh, no, but you don't have another. And she said she knew he was lying, saying that there was more in his storage unit. 
And then this is where I don't know what to believe because I know editing can really make us believe certain things. But then why did, if Joe didn't see them making out, then why did she come over and go, what in tarnation? Like what happened that made you say that? Because I, now I have to go back and watch because I listened to the podcast right before I jumped on here. So, no, I think I, I think production told her. Well, she I think says she didn't know her. that night. I just, I don't, that's what she was saying on Rachel's podcast is that she had no well, idea was, and that well, she went that home woman, to- That woman was doing the most. So- Maybe oh my god, she, she knew who he was and she was annoying. Yeah, and she was rea- I think she could have also been reacting that way to maybe the fact that this woman was being so obnoxious about it. Like, so she yeah. cuz it was clearly making her uncomfortable the behavior of how this woman was like literally a groupie. It wasn't a single woman that had just met Tom and didn't know who he no. was and was just strong. She was clearly a groupie Not and so all. and a fan. But um, oh, no, I think absolutely. that's what I think that's what made Joe uncomfortable initially. So maybe that you know, yeah, she probably didn't see the kiss and it probably made it worse after the fact. But yeah, mm-hmm. Because she says in her confessional that they've been sleeping together, she and Schwartz, and saying things like "I love you," and that she feels like he doesn't want to share their relationship with his friends, and that she's being treated like a secret. I believe mm, it. The paintball scene. Okay. Yeah, the it's funny how earlier Ariana had said that Tom Sandoval thinks he's a professional paintball player. And okay, I try not to talk about my family too much because they're not the ones who decided to go on here. But my brother used to be a professional paintball player (laughs) before he has his very well established, respectful career. Um, Yeah, he he played for Brass Eagle. And when I was in junior high, I'd like tell the guys that I knew all about paintballing because I just would, I was so desperate for someone to think I was cool. And I was like, yeah, I mean, I have an I-93 CNC automatic angel. I didn't even know what anything I was saying. It was my brother's paintball gun. And that's what I would tell them. They'd be like, oh, cool. (laughs) So stupid. (laughs) (laughs) The desperation of a junior high female. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, man. Uh, okay. One quick thing. I am just like go- going so hard, like defending Katie nonstop. And it's kind of, I don't mean to be, to be completely honest, but I'm so sick of some of this shit where the only thing I really got from that scene was Lala thinks that Katie isn't a loyal person because she banged Max Schwartz's little bestie. And I'm sorry, but it's not the same thing. <laughs> Max is the one that's best friends with Schwartz, not Katie. Why are we not saying Max is a dirty, dirty dog? Okay, let's Because they never, I mean, well, first of all, Max isn't on the show. Katie is. So Katie's going to take more of the heat for that, unfortunately, for her. Because, you know, if you want that kind of mess to be spread thin, then you should sleep with someone on the cast. But, unfortunately, the way that things landed, listen, do I think at that stage of life, that is the best way to go about business? No. Is she the most horrible person? No, it's not her best friend. And she's not with Schwartz anymore. So it it technically is free game. Right. However, it doesn't help when you do things like that. And then you try to stand as if you are the truth all might. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I get where Katie's coming from, but then sometimes you're a human too and you do some shit so let's everyone does but mm -hmm. you know though something you said just caused a thought to enter my brain that finally i'm not gonna only be defending katie if it was a disloyal move to anyone it was actually to dana who's one of her best friends who dated max and we saw at least it play out where she really liked him and they had a conversation on their on the podcast they both do together. So if if it was disloyal to anyone on Katie's end, that it was to Dana. So and she even said that was the first person she thought of the next morning when she was like, oh shit. <laughs> um so mm, so would Jeremy that Schwartz. have been so would that have been okay if Dana was on the show and that happened? Would it been how would that no. have 
how would Katie have reacted if someone, do you know what I'm saying? Like the, it can't be, I you do. can't play, can't I be agree with dumb that. and smart at the same time, dear. You either are going to be. Do not quote be, Bethany Frankel at me. <laughs> I'm just saying like, it's true though. You can't be on a high horse and then go do something like that. And you have a friend that you did actually impact. So forget about Schwartz yeah. and Max, like and what, Dana. And so, yes, exactly. you guys like probably talked it out and it's fine, but like, it's just, it's just interesting. So that's yeah. why when I, when I, I don't go, I give a lot more grace to Lala because I understand Lala's motive is not to intentionally go and hurt anyone, but she also understands that we signed up to be on a show that's right. got to be entertainment and drama based. And so mm -hmm. if I don't do something, people will literally sit here mute. Yeah. No, I agree. It's, it's, there are so many catch 22s and so many things that are all true at the same time. And, yeah. um, it's hard to, it's hard when you have opinions and you want to just stick with an opinion, but you also have to bring in facts and logical reasoning. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? No, it happens all the time you know. on these shows. We, I, I find myself swaying from mm -hmm. episode to episode sometimes, but that's just the way the game works. Yeah. It is. Okay. Joe and Schwartz. I think I am so, I don't want to use the word triggered because it's not like a traumatic thing for me. It's, I am so like I, the flashbacks I am having of the oh. way Schwartz has this conversation with Joe. Oh, I, oh, oh. <sighs> we have all been Joe. We have all been oh. Joe. Okay. There's no, you cannot discount that, my friends. We have all been in that place at a very much younger age. Not to say it can't happen later. Oh. I'm just saying I remember yeah. distinctly. Sometimes I almost felt like it was verbatim. I, I was like, oh, wait, I have heard these lines before. <laughs> oh. And it's like, do all these straight men who are complete and total fuckboys go to school for this is there like some sort of finishing school like i went to one called white gloves and party manners and i feel like i don't know it's just like breadcrumbs and douchebags <laughs> is that the name of their finishing school that they learn all these ways and it's not just straight men it's it's just fuckboys in general where did y'all go because y'all play the same playbook because mm -hmm. he goes to her he goes to joe and just says Hey, you know, what happened the other night? A am I sending you mixed signals? And sh she's like, mm? and he just says, I don't want to be in a relationship because he wants to date other people and get numbers and hook up with other people. And ow, it's like, I felt it. Ow, ouch. And I'll be damned. Joe just bucked up to the occasion because she said, how do you think I've felt the last fucking year hanging out with you? And he tries to interrupt her and she says, shut the fuck up. And I was like, oh, girl, yes. Where was this person? Joseph came out. it broke my heart when she asked him, jo yes. <laughs> it was like Cynthia's fitty. <laughs> mm -hmm. Excuse me, Fofty. <laughs> Fofty. Let's stay, let's stay in the brand. Uh-huh. She asks him if he's embarrassed by her and she says that she hears he's and he says that he hears she's saying that behind closed doors she's claiming they're secretly dating. But Schwartz, you're sitting there playing house with her. Oh my God. And then he says, well, maybe we need to not hang out as much. And that's when I was like, Joe, don't you cry yet. Don't you cry yet. And she says, or at all. But then this monster of a man says, yeah, I mean, that's fine. Monster. Oh, and then he has the audacity and confessional to say that it's gut gut wrenching to hear her say that she doesn't want to hang out with him at all anymore. And it kills me because they kind of are perfect for each other when you're watching them together. They kind of aren't even Katie has said that. And she says to him that they have such a connection and everyone sees this connection and she clearly is seeing them grow old together as she's describing them growing old together. God bless. Okay. And 
he, she says she needs time because she has feelings for him. And he does that bullshit thing where he should have just let that go and said, I'm very sorry if I've been giving you the mixed signal signals, or I've not been clear with you. But instead he's like, yeah, I do too. No, you don't need to reciprocate it verbally when you don't mean it. Okay. I am triggered. I think I'm triggered. I'm triggered. It happened. He triggered That's a lot of people. I'm sure and that that was a very mm -hmm. triggering conversation. Mm. Cause she says in confessional too, that she just wants him to be happy because he's her favorite person in the world. And she really, she really loves him. But she gets up to leave and she's crying and says she just wants to call her dad. And that really made me sad for her. Yeah, it was it really did. sad. I'm not going to lie. It's, you know, she doesn't deserve that. She deserved a straight answer because I, from what it seems like, she most likely was so kind and wonderful to Schwartz. Whatever we feel about her involvement in this or that, and however kooky she is, I think she was very, very much a a acting like a good partner to Schwartz. Behind closed doors. Oh, and he flew her out to Florida. Yeah, she flew <laughs> he flew her out to Florida to go meet his family. That's that's confusing as hell. That breaks my heart. I'm not gonna lie. Not gonna lie, but he's gonna get confronted about it at the reunion at the very least. Well. Giorgio, I know you have things to do this fine Thursday. Real quick, I'm just going to say hi to a few people. Oh, this chat's been lit up. Hi, Kelly. Hi. Oh, Krista. Yes, I pulled you up there. Reality with Krista Marie. That's a cute name. Then mm -hmm. I saw Robert in here. There you are. Yes, hi. And hi, Lee. And anyone who didn't join the chat, hello to you. I can only see the names that pop up in here. Unfortunately, I can't see all the names of everyone joining me. But y'all, like I said, go listen to Giorgio and I's recap of The Valley on his podcast, Giorgio Says. It is also going to be on his Patreon, which he is working on starting. Also, follow Giorgio on YouTube. He has so much good content. And while you're at it, follow him on Instagram and TikTok at Giorgio Says. Follow me, Besties by Caitlin, on Instagram and TikTok. And please subscribe to the YouTube channel. Uh, that gives more incentive to continue doing these lives, which, you know, we scramble to make them. And it's Besties by Bravo on YouTube. I I have no shame. Please leave a five-star review. <laughs> it's no shame in this game. And uh, until... Next Tuesday, when I see y'all, my friends, I will probably be covering Summer House and whatever other gossip comes out. <laughs> Keep us on our toes. Until Tuesday, y'all enjoy your weekend. And thank you again for joining me today, Giorgio. Thank you. Okay. Bye, besties. Bye, guys. <laughs>